welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lindsay and I'm here to help you feel like an interior designer in your very own home. Well, at least that's what I'm trying to do. So why don't you just go ahead and join me? Let's do it together. In today's video, I had a kind of a fun idea. Let's play a game. It's called Love It, Hate It, or Love to Hate It. That's a long title. Maybe you can help me come up with a better one. Here's how it works. I'm gonna share 10 home decor pieces that are currently trending and my rating for each. If I love it, hate it, or if I kind of love to hate it. And I want you to share your opinions down below too. Ooh, I can't wait to hear what you think of each one of these. We just love a strong opinion around here, backed up with plausible evidence, of course. <laughs> First up, checkerboard area rugs. Checkerboard print is having a huge moment right now in tile, in textiles, and in area rugs. I keep seeing it popping up and honestly, I kind of love it. I was a little bit unsure at first. I had black and white tile floors years and years and years ago. I really love them. I was a little bit more inspired by like 50s diner style, which is kind of cheesy perhaps, but that's kind of where I was at that time. Huge I Love Lucy fan as a child. The checkerboard area rug thing though, I, at first I wasn't so sure how I felt about it. It felt a little 80s cheesy checkerboard to me at first, which I think it's coming from that postmodern sort of take on it. But seeing it in a lot of neutral colors, really beautiful texture area rugs. I have seen some interesting color combinations. I really do love a bicolor print in general, so I think this was naturally something I would be drawn to. I've even been thinking about incorporating this checkerboard pattern in the brick stone work that we're doing back in the back patio space. So yeah, I might be sold on the checkerboard thing. Let me know what you think down below. Next up, sphere pillows. I first remember seeing them popping up at Restoration Hardware in their modern catalog. They had a lot of these spherical, almost look like beach ball pillows with that sort of a shape on it, all in that boucle fabric to match boucle furniture that they had in their modern line. I remember thinking that that pillow was just a bit much. I still feel think that it's quite a bit much. I personally don't like the beach ball pillow. The sphere pillow is just a little hokey for me. It feels a little circusy to me, like you're gonna pull out your pet seal and they're going to balance that pillow on their nose for treats or something, or maybe you're gonna get your dog to do that. Actually, maybe we do need one of those pillows. Another interesting furniture piece that I am seeing popping up, Burlwood Furniture. Burlwood Furniture, probably not for everyone. It's definitely got sort of a bold textural print to it. Obviously, it's a smooth lacquered piece that lets that interesting wood grain of Burlwood shine. It's a very unique wood grain. It definitely harkens back to some very old traditional pieces from centuries ago, but it also had a big resurgence in the 1970s, 60s, so you'll kind of get some of those vibes in some of these pieces of furniture. One Burlwood piece I'm really loving lately is this long console table with round edges, a couple of drawers that pull out, very, very simple. So if you couldn't tell already, I super love the Burlwood. I would love to find a place for something Burlwood in our home. If I could find a really cool little cabinet or a table with some sort of storage for the entry in Burlwood, that would make me very happy. <laughs> The next one, I really hummed and hawed about this one. I changed my mind on this a lot. Bold print wallpaper. I think the one I'm specifically seeing a lot of lately is the type that has a very bold background color, either a bright color or a dark color for more of a moody vibe. And then the print of the wallpaper is some sort of fruit pattern. Obviously floral print wallpaper has been around forever. It's making a big comeback with grand millennial traditional style, these bold, beautiful prints and colors, but specifically I keep seeing this bold wallpaper popping up with fruit patterns on it, like lemon trees or orange trees or something of that nature. And I'm gonna say love to hate it. I think that I, on some level, am attracted to these beautiful bold colors and inspiring prints are always exciting, but it just feels so heavy and so busy to me in so many contexts. If I was gonna do wallpaper somewhere in this house, I probably would pick an accent wall somewhere, either in a bedroom, bathroom, or home office, and I would select something very simple, something I could live with for a long time. I love to experiment with my home, so I'm all for like, buy the wallpaper, just make sure it's something that you can remove if you change your mind in a 
year or two. You might, especially with something bold like that. You never know. This one you've seen around a ton, no doubt. It's made a huge comeback thanks to one designer, and it's the Mario Bellini Camelianda Sofa. Athena Calderon is an interior designer who has kind of shot to superstardom in the last couple of years. She has a beautiful Instagram account called Iswoon, a blog to match. She's got cookbook and a design book, and her style is Oh, flawless. One thing that's super interesting about Athena is she sources really interesting vintage furniture or vintage reproductions. In her New York home, she has a beautiful vintage Mario Bellini Camelianda sofa. It's kind of a sand color, it's that velvet, and it's a beautiful piece. It is a showstopper. If you see something like that in someone's home, it instantly gives you all the vibes. It's that 1970s sort of bubbly furniture it's super avant-garde and also quite comfortable, I've heard. They are just, ooh, so interesting. I feel like this is one of those interior design pieces that you either love it and it excites you from a visual standpoint or it kind of feels weird and arty and not like something that you want to touch with a 10 foot pole. I'll go ahead and share. I think you might already have figured it out by the flowery way that I explained this sofa, but I definitely love it. She also has a reproduction in a soft tealy sagey green in her vacation home. And it's absolutely stunning in that color as well. So I just feel like this is one of those no fail pieces of furniture and it just will make an entire space. You want to keep other pieces around it fairly simple although you know she picked some really interesting very round sculptural accent chairs to go with this and it's absolutely stunning. You better let me know what you're thinking about this sofa. I am very interested to hear because it is definitely showing up a lot of places and I can see where some people might be tired of seeing it. I'm not quite there yet. This is a trend that's been around for a hot minute, but I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. And that's rattan everything. Natural materials such as wood, wicker, rattan have come back hard in the last several years. If you look at a lot of the interior design styles that are trending right now, Scandi, Japandi, mid-century modern, a lot of these styles do lean hard on natural materials. I love rattan and I have really enjoyed seeing it come back, especially in furniture pieces. I've always collected a lot of rattan baskets and different things, but to see more rattan used in interesting ways in furniture, not just for the outdoors, has been really fun. That said, it's been a little much on the rattan scale personally for me. I think I might be verging on hate it. Now that doesn't mean that you should get rid of your rattan. It doesn't mean that I'm getting rid of mine. I do, I do love it, but I'm a little over the rattan everything on the furniture piece. It might be time to move on from it a little bit when we're starting to resurrect a lot of these vintage round top wicker bookshelves, for example. It just feels a little bit overdone. And I don't know, I'm just, I feel like this is a trend that we're gonna be super embarrassed about in about six months maybe. I think you can totally incorporate a few rattan items throughout your home. I think it just becomes a problem when you have a lot of rattan in every room. It feels a little bit more authentic and genuine and special if you do it just a little bit more sparingly. And honestly, I think that's probably the best advice I could give for anything related to home decor. Less is usually more unless you're a maximalist. Another thing that I think we need to discuss, the resurgence of turquoise and teal tones across interior design. I was really surprised actually that Aegean Teal was selected as Benjamin Moore's Color of the Year 2021. Honestly, I've been seeing a big shift toward warm tones in the last couple of years, and I was sure they'd select something in that warm color family. However, I have been pleasantly surprised with how this color has been used. I think that when you had that Tiffany box turquoisey blue trending in the 2010s with that sort of zigzag chevron print and it was on everything, I think it just became a little bit tealed out. And I used to love teal. I used to wear a lot of teal clothing, embarrassingly enough, perhaps. But, you know, it's just one of those colors I've had a love-hate relationship across the years of my life. And to see it pop up again, I was like, no, 
are not that Tiffany box blue teal, but instead it's become this elevated, almost historical, muddy teal. It feels a little bit more expensive, a little bit more curated, a little bit more, I don't know, just interesting. It's a new teal to me. <laughs> that must sound crazy if you think these videos are silly, but I don't know. I just feel like it's a new way of seeing teal. I'm actually really loving it in wall colors, shocking myself, honestly, especially when you have a room with a lot of millwork, a lot of molding, chair rail, that French style molding, big baseboards, really interesting doors, and then literally everything is painted in this sort of muddy, sophisticated, tealy blue color. That to me is the most genius use of this color because then you can have pretty neutral furniture and that color gets to just shine. And then you can choose art pieces that really just come to life on a bold color like that. So, okay, at the end of the day, I guess, I love to hate it. I hate that sort of 2010s version of it, but this new version I may be into. Here's another interesting one I can't wait to hear your take on, wiggle lamps, also known as wave lamps. These are a quintessential part of this sort of postmodern resurgence that's happening right now. If you're not familiar with that design style, it is sort of a response to minimalism. It's a lot of sort of ephemeral, trendy, bright colors, rounded edges, a little bit 80s because that's when it had a big moment. Postmodern items are definitely something that catch your attention. They don't just fade into the background and that describes the wiggle lamp or the wave lamp. These are those metal lamps that you're seeing right now with that black line that maybe does like a zigzag pattern with a really interesting bold maybe pleated lampshade on it. You can also find a lot of these called wave lamps where maybe it's three bars of metal that sort of make a wave pattern together. Usually a white shade and a black metal interesting design that just kind of grabs your eye. These are the kind of objects that you're seeing pop up, especially in Japandi designs. You can have just a very simple floor lamp. It doesn't take up very much space. And it's that contrast, that sort of interesting shape, that unexpected element. I feel like they've been sitting in thrift shops for the last 10 plus years with nobody even touching them. And now they are gone. That wavy black metal line against a white wall is very stimulating, especially when mixing design styles. A lamp like this surrounded by some more traditional pieces would definitely feel really fresh and interesting. So I guess I love it. What do you think? <laughs> Another big set of items that was supposed to be a huge trend this year in 2021 is round edge furniture. And one iteration I'm seeing popping up is round accent chairs, usually in a pair, totally round on the outside, almost cylindrical in shape with a little round seat cushion to sit in. And a lot of these designs are also in a swivel. This I think is really part of this resurgence of 70s design. You've seen a lot of these sort of the Mario Bellini sofa come back, a lot of these terrazzo really angular square tables coming back, brass accents coming back, a lot of rattan and wicker and woven things coming back, natural live edge wood pieces. So it doesn't surprise me at all that we're seeing this rounded edge furniture coming back. It also harkens to some 80s designs, that postmodernist design aesthetic. And so there's a lot of different overlapping ideas here where these round edge furniture pieces, where whether they're more 70s in spirit or 80s inspired, are really, really hot right now. We're also seeing a lot of these furniture pieces coming out in that boucle fabric. It's been around for a while now. And I'm wondering how you feel about it now. Teddy bear fabric, Sherpa fabric, nubby texture to it's very soft and cozy and snuggly. Do you think that boucle is gonna stick around? Or do you think in a year or two, we're gonna feel like, ooh, that teddy bear fabric's a little dated. I'm interested. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I actually do really love boucle, but more than anything, let's go back to round edge accent seating. I am here for it. I am totally in love with it. In our living room, all of the furniture there right now is super angular. We have a really angular mid-century modern leather sofa. We have a rectangular coffee table. You know, we've got a lot of 90 degree angles across the entire room. And then of course, we've got these big blocky chairs from Ikea. I think they just discontinued these, you guys. You always ask me about these, but I'll try to link it if I can. Those chairs are super blocky and square and and big and heavy and dark. I really want to replace them with something that's a lighter color, something that is a little bit more curvy. Just give the room a little bit more of a layered vibe and not so 90 degree angle exclusively. <laughs> so I guess what I'm saying is, 
I love the round edge accent seating and I tried out a couple chairs today. I'm loving all of the options from West Elm. I know I won't just buy from West Elm, I promise, but they did have some really beautiful designs, really beautiful fabrics and on a swivel. So very easy to watch TV or turn and have a conversation with somebody in the living room space. So I might need to save up for those chairs. I'll link a few of the options that I'm considering down below. I attribute this last one to one company, Restoration hardware. Now don't come for me if you are a restoration hardware devotee. I am not a devotee, but I can appreciate the beautiful designs that come out of restoration hardware. One thing that has really taken over in the last couple of years, I feel like, is the resurgence of the figurative sculpture, whether that be a head, a bust, or a torso, or a full figure. I am seeing these everywhere and people are scouring the vintage market to find as many as they can. Home Goods is another place where people are buying reproduction ones. I've found some kind of weird looking, it's like foam plastic covered ones that are really bad. Um, yeah, but there's also been some really beautiful ones. Stone reproduction ones are sort of crumbling in a little bit of areas, makes you feel like you took a piece of Italy home with you. I kind of understand why people love these. They bring a little bit of layered texture and history into your home. I am an art lover. I loved touring Italy's many sculpture museums and it was so much fun to feel connected to that work. It's a vibe. I'm just waxing you guys. It's just, it is but it's also getting to be very popular. There's a lot of accounts that are showcasing this kind of stuff. So I'm wondering what you think. Do you think this is timeless? Do you love it? Do you feel like it has no real trend label because it feels historical in nature? Or do you think that it's just trending right now because people are RH obsessed? So I haven't added any sculpture into our art collection. I found a really cool horse once that I was considering buying and I think it was just too large for our space. I could see doing a very small sculptural piece, maybe on a small stand. I'm definitely more interested in animal related sculpture than figurative sculpture. Primarily the trend that I'm talking about here is figurative sculpture, like heads, busts, bodies, torsos. So I, I guess to be honest, maybe I hate this one. I can't see myself buying figurative sculpture, like a naked body torso or a head. I guess never say never. Who knows? Maybe in six months I will break down and buy one but I don't know every time I find one and I look at it and I think about bringing it into our home something about it just doesn't feel right and I definitely can appreciate it in other people's homes so maybe I'll just say not for me on this one I guess I just can't see it fitting into our home at least right now. Mm. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to hear what you guys think about every single one of these. Give me like a one and then give me your rating. Two, three, give me your rating, like for each one. I wanna see especially which ones you guys love to hate because those are the most fun to talk about. <laughs> like and subscribe for more interior design and home decor tips. Next week, I'll be taking a walk through an interesting interior and sharing my thoughts and reactions to it. I've had a lot of requests for these lately, so if you can think of any celebrity home tour, YouTuber home tour, maybe it's an AD home tour. Let me know down in the comments, what do you think I should react to? I think this might be kind of fun. If you liked this video, you're gonna wanna check out Splurge or Steel. In this video, I share five trending decor pieces that are crazy expensive and some budget-friendly dupes that you can source instead. And I'll also link my playlist of Design 101 videos down here, all of my best tips for creating a home that you love on a budget. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, my friends.